Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware, and I've got a treat for you. Mike <laughs> Taylor is with us and going to share some great information. Uh, so much stuff out there on O2. Um, you know, back in the older days when he was younger, <laughs> there actually wasn't auto flames and, you know, some other parallel positioning controllers out there. Um, and O2 was just really something that you really didn't know about until you had a, uh, an analyzer put to, uh, put to the burner. Now we talked um, a, a, a couple episodes back, and Gerald and I talked on the last episode of Bullying Point about Auto Flame, how it handles some things on the, on the low O2. Technical paper on ABMA basically has kind of brought this to light. We like to debate things here and talk about stuff, and so that's what, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Michael's last word technically for us. And I'd like to just maybe just talk a little bit further about the O2, um, what the ABMA was actually trying to or say, okay, about, yep. about the low O2 condition. Well, what they're saying is that you shouldn't automatically shut the bore down on low O2 simply because you've got a lot of combustibles going through the boiler if you're down at, you know, especially if you're below 1% O2, then there's a lot of unburnt fuel in there going up out the stack. So if you just turn it off or let the uh, control shut the bore down, it's gonna go through purge, put a lot of oxygen in there with that unburnt fuel that's already burning and possibly blow the bore up or have a combustion explosion. Probably wouldn't blow it up, but it can blow the doors off the ends of it and or on a water tube bore, can make it round instead of square. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, so they've said, don't shut it down on low O2 to get the O2s back up before you shut it down. Okay. Now, doing that, I mean, you can shut it down a couple different ways. Right. So maybe talk a little bit about the two, the, you know, two ways that you could actually shut it down. Well, the one way is to get the O2s back up which is to you know, manually shut the, close down some on the gas valve to, to get the O2s back up. But the only people that's gonna be able to do that realistically is a t experienced technician or a very experienced operator, maintenance guy or an operator that just blows the bore down, doesn't do anything else, is not gonna be able to do that. Because if right. you close that valve down too quick, then you're gonna have the same thing, too much air in there. So then you're gonna have an explosion and then the guy's sitting right there beside the boiler when it explodes. You don't want that. Right, right. So the other way to, to shut it down, especially if you've got inexperienced people, is go to the exit and hit the e-stop on your way out. When you hit the e-stop, it kills control power to the boiler. So the gas valve shuts, the blower stops so you don't go through purge or anything. Everything shuts down. I think it's really good to clarify, and you and I were talking earlier about this, of there is a difference in the e-stop and actually shutting down the yeah, your controller. Control. Right, your on-off switch on the burner panel, when you turn it off, or you trip out a limit, the fire, it closes the gas valves and the boiler goes through a post purge and it, the, it blows all air through there to get the gases out of the boiler. When you hit the e-stop, it shuts power to the controller, which in turn shuts power down to the blower. Everything shuts off. Mm. So you don't get any purge, nothing. And give so it you don't add all that extra O2 in there to mix right. with that unburnt fuel. Right. Maybe give you even a little more tidbit is um, e-stops in a boiler room like this where we've got four different boilers in here. One e-stop going out the door. Shuts it all down. Shuts it all down. It. Right. And to put something like that together, um, everything has to be tied together. Yeah. It all has to be interlocked together. So like this boiler room has two e-stops, one at two different doors, and you've got four boilers in here that they're all tied to those e-stops. You hit an e-stop, it kills them all. Mm -hmm. so, it, so yeah, it's a, it's a complicated process to put all that together for the e-stops, but that's what the code calls for anymore is an e-stop at each door. Mm -hmm. 
and some boiler rooms will have one even on the panel. Sure. But uh, but they're definitely supposed to have them at the doors. A lot of older boiler rooms don't. Right. And they should be brought up to the code to have those e stops. They're they're real important. You also hit them when you walk in and the boiler's cherry red because it doesn't have any water in it. You hit that and run. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as far as the auto flame though, um, you know, and other parallel positioning systems that actually are looking at uh, O2s, mm -hmm. the thing about an auto flame is that you can actually set parameters in here um, that really don't let it get down to those low, low O2s. Um, and then you can kind of have some safety there, correct? Right, and, and I know what ABMA is seeing with their, with their letter, but, but a lot of what they're referring to is uh, big utility boards that run, are running down at, at 1% O2 so they can get as much efficiency as they can because they're burning so much fuel. Mm. Where we don't, we don't typically run them down there with the, with the auto flame and the EGAs, we, we pretty much set it at 3%. Mm -hmm. Because we want a little bit of leeway before we get into trouble. Mm -hmm. So then when we're setting a burner up, if we set it up at 3%, then we'll set limits in there to where, okay, if it gets 1% off of that, any place in the curve, we either alarm or shut down, depending on what the customer wants. Well, if we're at 2%, we're still in good shape. We're not getting on that critical point of having all that CO. Right. The other thing that the auto flame does is it reads the CO, so we'll set our CO limit at 300. If it gets above 300, shut it down mm. before you ever get to that point in explosive condition. So, right. so so we've got a lot more leeway with it. We're not running on the edge like some of these people are. We're giving us ourselves a little more leeway and setting the limits up so that it doesn't get into that combustible condition. And if you don't have a uh, system, an EGA, or you know, that's really looking at the O2s, there, there's only a couple ways to be able to see if you have a condition. Well, yeah, and it's, yeah, that's either by smelling the CO around the boiler room or seeing the smoke come out. <laughs> right, right. Unless, you know, a, a, a technician goes and sticks his analyzer in the stack. Mm -hmm. But the other good thing about the, the auto flame product, not to be pushing it or anything, but I do, but, uh, but it, it reads that CO. Mm -hmm. So you know that you've got, whether you've got bad combustion or not, no matter what the O2 is. Right. So we can shut it down CO as well. Mm -hmm. That, that helps a lot staying out of those dangerous situations. Right, right. As far as, um, you know, I, I definitely want to revisit and go back to what you said about technician, operator, um, you know, and just making sure that everybody's yeah. understanding that this is not a situation to where you can kind of, as an operator or a, an inexperienced uh, uh, maintenance guy, uh, again, no, uh, uh, not putting down a position, but it, it's just experience is all it is. Yeah, and it's experience because for one thing, you, you know, a technician realizes that that burner putting that fuel in that main tube, it takes it a while to get through that board, 30 to 45 seconds to get through there before he gets a sample. And then it takes a little bit for the analyzer to read that sample. Mm -hmm. So every time you make a change, you've got 45 seconds to a minute before you see it in the stack. Mm -hmm. So if you start closing that gas valve down, an inexperienced guy is going to close it down. He doesn't see any change. He keeps closing. He keeps closing it down until all of a sudden you got all this. You ain't got any fuel in there. You got all this extra air. Well, you got the same thing as if you just turn the switch off. Right. You got a combustible or explosive atmosphere. Sure. Where an experienced guy knows that. So he's gonna close it down a little bit. He's gonna watch his analyzer for a minute, see what it does. If it doesn't move, he'll close it down a little bit more. Watch it again for another minute. It just, it takes time for that to change. Right. So you have to have the experience to know that and <laughs> to have the, the ability to stand there and do it. Right. 
right. because a, a maintenance guy that just goes in once a day and blows the boiler down, he's going to get very nervous mm -hmm. <laughs> and start closing down on that valve and get itself in worse situation. Right, right. Yeah, so the... I know even on our, from our standpoint, I mean, you know, with our technicians, I mean, what are you, what are you telling them? Well, I was, we've sat out, out there in the trailers when we were starting up rental boilers and have shut down the gas valve before. Mm -hmm. But as long as the flame is stable, if it starts shaking, the boiler mm -hmm. rattling, then hit the e-stop. Right, right. Because at that point, you've done lost control of it. It's time to shut it down and let things calm down and let's start all over. <laughs> and the, again, the cool thing about the auto flame is that you have the trip, but you also have an alarm. Right. And yeah, you don't have to trip it. You can just have it send out an alarm. Right. Uh, and typically on our rentals, you know, we're alarming. Mm -hmm. um, typically is what we're doing with auto flame instead of actually um, putting the trip in, correct? Right. Yeah. And, and it really depends on the, most time on the customer, but it, you know, they have to have people that can respond to that. Right. To that alarm. Because right. you alarm it out on exhaust gases, somebody has to be notified immediately and do something with it. Yeah. Not just let it sit there and alarm. Right. So it's part of the training out there with the, with the customers, making sure they realize that. You have to do something as soon as it alarms. Sure. Awesome. All right. Anything else that we're missing, you think? No, thanks. So. I, I don't think, so. I think we got yeah. it all. Yeah. Good. I yeah. told you to have a treat. Uh, I know it's a little bit long, but sometimes just being able to kind of walk through this stuff and, um, you know, these are the discussions I know we have uh, all the time when we're sitting around and chatting about about things. Um, and, and, and really, there's uh, it, there's not necessarily the the right and wrong. It's it's safe. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, what's safe for this guy might not be safe for this guy. Right. Right, and even though you have a technical paper that's coming out or whatever it is, you know, you're still some things that you gotta do and make sure from an experienced right. technician that you are the guy that's handling handling that. So um, the good thing it sounds like though is that you need an auto flame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right, well, um, appreciate you hanging out with us and enduring a long boiling point, but I think it's some great, great information uh, for the industry out there. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Appreciate Michael and his insights and experience and all that information. Now, speaking of information, we are ready to go here at Boiler University. When we have to come out here and eat, of course, we've got our dividers and we're all set up for COVID. Now, if you're not interested in coming um, and you want to stay home, we have Boiler 101 as well online now that you can go check out and do that course there. Obviously, we'll have our 201 classes and, and even some 101 classes that we're still doing, but if you want to do it online, you can now do it. The guys have put together an incredible um, curriculum for you, and uh, it, it, is, it is worth the time and the money. Um, obviously, you don't have to travel, and uh, you don't have to be out, and out at, uh, away from work and hotels and food and all that thing. You can do it at, uh, on your own time uh, in your house. Speaking of information, too, make sure you check out all of the information on our website with steam cultures and weekly boiler tips, as well as the boiling points. Over 500 videos out there for you that you could actually um, you know, learn a lot about the industry. So well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter if you don't mind. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.